Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Jonathan David de la Cruz, and welcome to the virtual class on curriculum development and to the micro lecture series on fundamental concepts of curriculum. So, in the previous micro lecture series, we talked about levels of curriculum, and now we're going to talk about types and patterns of curriculum. Now, the types and patterns of the curriculum, we have three types, and each of these have different patterns. First one is subject centered curriculum. The next one is learner-centered curriculum and the problem-centered curriculum. Let's start with subject-centered curriculum. The subject-centered curriculum design are most popular and widely used curriculum designs. Knowledge and content are integral parts of curriculum and teacher has full control of the curriculum. So subject-centered design is focused more on the subject no? or on the content. It's content heavy and the teacher has full control depending also on the different subjects or different patterns. Now let's start with the first pattern. The first pattern is separate subject design. The strength is it's uh, oldest known curriculum based on concept of knowledge organized by specialized discipline, verbal activity, and teacher has active role. In the separate subject design, tinitingnan natin ang mga subject na hiwalay sa ibang subject. Um, we do not see integration. This is an old approach. Makalumang approach ito pagdating sa mga subjects wherein they are independent to one another. And in fact, there was a time no, that subject teachers tend to be more competitive to other teachers uh, because they say, again, in, in a traditional view, no, uh, in a philosophical view of education, that um, there are three major subjects in the basic education, which is math, science, and English. Okay. Um, during that time, people people see, or the community even, the society sees that each subject are separate to one another. So subject, separate subject design ang tawag natin doon. Discipline-based siya, ibig sabihin, nakaangkla ang, ang content nito, nakaangkla lang ang content nito based sa discipline, and teacher has an active role. Meaning, teacher center dito, si teacher lang ang nagdi-discuss. Uh, again, I do not uh, this uh, pattern, I, sorry, this pattern, no, separate subject design, is actually uh, effective at some point to certain subjects, but it is not encouraged to all subjects. The limitations are isolates and compartmentalized knowledge, as I have said, as as I have mentioned kanina, kaya nga siya separate subject design, no, it only sees its discipline as as special no it only sees its discipline as something that is content heavy or content wise canon it appropriate for large number of students to technical and specialized focus on content and neglect students needs okay so as i have said in kanina this is subject centered curriculum so when we say it is subject centered curriculum it focuses only on the content it focuses only on the subject no last priority na yung learners needs no uh, it's one of the uh, reflective questions in the 21st century education ano nga ba dapat ang ituro natin sa mga estudyante yung kailangan nilang matuto matutunan o yung gusto nilang matutunan o yung gusto nilang matutunan isa ito sa mga uh, perennial questions no in the 21st century education now going back no separate, separate subject design these subjects uh can be seen, observed in a traditional view of education. Um, kasi there are subjects na pwede kasing uh, i-correlate, kagayon itong sasabihin natin ngayon. No? We have correlated subject design. The strength is an attempt to eliminate the isolation and compartmentalization of subjects without radically overhauling the subject design. Interdisciplinary link while keeping identities. Correlated design only involves how many? two subjects that can be related example literature and history diba you can say you can find integration of subject na history and literature another one you can also find an integration of mathematics and science since math is the language of science you can also try to look for an integration of economics and tle diba pag nagbebenta-benta Correlated subject design ito, kapag yung teacher ninyo nung high school, ang tingin na nila sa mga subject ay pwedeng pagsamahin. Natry nyo na ba? Natry, sana natry nyo na no, yung 
ng high school, pinagawa kayo ng business plan. Yung business plan na yon ay chinect ng English teacher. Tapos yun naman ay um, in-implement ninyo sa inyong TLE class. Okay? So that's that could be a correlated subject design. We're in two, two fields of knowledge no? are combining and helping each other no? to, to allow the learners have uh, a meaningful learning, experiential learning. Pero... Again, pero ang, ang, ang attempt dito dapat maintain pa rin yung identity ng subject. Madidistinguish mo pa rin kung alin doon yung kay math at science, alin doon yung kay literature at kay history. Dapat matidistinguish mo pa rin yun. Pagdating sa limitations, will require teachers to prepare lessons heavily. Why? If you're a teacher that specializes a certain subject already, meron ka ng mastery ng field mo, pero in-infuse or sasamahan ka ng ibang field of knowledge, no? there will have a time that you will have to unfill what you already know. Dapat open ka for your uh, for possible learning di ba? As, a, as a teacher. And since no, uh, mag-aaral ka ng bagong subject, dapat ready ka. Okay? Yun yung limitation nito. Pangalawa, most schedules do not allow sufficient block of time for students to meaningfully study correlated subjects. Um, kulang ang oras natin, no? To correlate subjects. So, ito ito sa mga limitations ng correlated subject design. Okay. The third one is the broad field subject design. Isa ito sa, I think, in the 21st century education, isa ito sa pinaka-advantageous. Okay? Integration of knowledge and more comprehensive models of knowledge. Dissolve boundaries to make meaningful knowledge. And knowledge is not linear or fragmented, but multidisciplinary and multidimensional. So kung sa, kung sa separate subject design, tinitingnan natin ang mga subjects as separate to one another and has certain specialization, compartmentalize ito. Pagdating sa correlated, there are two subjects no, that can be correlated and are, and are interdisciplinary. Pero pagdating sa broad field, no, broad field subject design, this kind of pattern is actually an integration of not one, not only two, three, no, but as many as they can. Tingnan natin ang MAPE. No? MAPE is Music, Arts, Physical Education, and Health. This subject is a broad field design, broad field design. Because no, there are different fields of knowledge infused in one subject. So there is, an, there is supposed to be an integration of music, of arts, physical, health, physical education, and health. But ang ginagawa nila ngayon is music and arts, P and health. That's they're going to find a fine ground to integrate these two further. So doon natin makikita yung pagiging broad field design. Another broad field design is that in the old curriculum, we see science, no, sa grades, uh, sa first year, second year, third year, fourth year, sciences are separated, separate subject design ang science natin before bago mag K-12. Grade 7, first year or grade 7, tinuturo earth science. Second year, biology. Third year, chemistry. Fourth year, physics. Pero pagpasok ng K-12, meron tayong tinatawag na integrated science. Sa integrated science, 1, 2, 3, 4, pang grade 7, 8, 9, and 10 yun, meron ng biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science every year. Nag-iiba lang per quarter. Ang tawag natin dito ay broad field subject design because the general sciences is present in, the, in a certain year level. Pero dapat may theme yan eh. Uh, I want... Uh, Sana no, na-realize ng mga teachers na nagtuturo ng sciences that there is a theme that they're supposed to follow per year level. May connection po yung mga subject from biology, earth science, chemistry, and physics. Kung bakit nasa grade 7 yun, nasa grade 8, nasa grade 9, nasa grade 10. Hindi, na, hindi nakita yung pattern, no, yung seamless pattern nila. Kaya medyo nagkaka-problem din tayo. But moving on, no, there are... Uh, the first one is separate subject design. We see subjects compartmentalized, isolated, pero ang maganda naman doon, nai-specialize ng bata yung subject. Yun naman yung maganda sa compartmentalized. Kaso yun lang yung master niya. Pagdating sa correlated, there are two subjects that can be mastered. Third, no? Can be integrated, can be correlated rather, the term. 
okay? Na makikita natin yung observation kagaya ng literature and history titingnan mo yung mga literature during a certain era, di ba? So that's an historical approach on, on literature or a literary, litera, literary approach on history. It's, it's up to the teacher kung anong approach ang gagawin niya. And pagdating sa broad field design, no, papasok doon yung mga subjects na malawak yung kanyang sakop. Um, also, no, I, I think maganda din gawin is yung gagawa ka ng business plan. Pag gumawa ka ng business plan, ang mag-check nun, grammar teacher or uh, language teacher. After nun, i-implement mo sa TLE naman. Diba? Tapos, kukun mo naman yung market analysis niya sa economic subject mo. So, tatlong subject magkakasama sa isang output. Diba? At least, mas madali yun para sa bata. Diba? Isang output lang gagawin niya, tatlong subject na agad yung nagawa niya. Diba? It's, an it's an advantageous approach if teachers uh you know help each other okay okay limit nito is issue of breadth versus depth ang issue ng broad field design gaano kalalim ang pagkatutun ng bata papare uh, kabalik taran ito ng uh, subject center design sa so subject sa so separate subject center design um, na specialize sum bata kaya nga pansin niyo dati di ba may mga bata talaga na ang galing galing sa math O kaya naman ang galing-galing sa English. Pero doon lang sila magaling. Kasi yun yung na-specialize nila. Kasi separate subject design yun. Okay? So, yun naman. Pero pagdating sa broad field, na-master mo nga yung different fields, wala ka na... Ay, na-master na, na mo naman yung different fields, no? na-aware ka sa different fields, pero wala kang certain level of mastery dahil hindi ganun kalalim yung, yung topic na naaral mo. Okay? Now, the second one is the learner-centered curriculum. So, kung yung una, yung subject-centered curriculum, it's teacher-centered. This one naman, the students are the center or the focus of the program. These designs are found more frequently at elementary school levels where teachers tend to stress the development of a child. Kanina, yung mga examples ko more on high school, no, because it's more observed in high school, yung mga sub-correlated separate subject and broad field but it's already existing also in elementary and even in college no pero high school lang yung, yung nakita kong best i think appropriate way to give an example okay so learner centered curriculum ang focus ang bata so the first type or of pattern no is the child centered design students are actively involved in the environment custom made children who attain self-realization through social participation, emphasis on child rather than subject matter. So ito naman ay kabalik tara ni subject-centered. Si subject-centered ay teacher control, active ang teacher's control doon. Pagdating dito, si, si child ang center ng ating design. No? Si child, ikakustom mo kung ano yung kailangan ng bata. Halimbawa, in the primary primary years of a learner, no, um, una mong ginagawa is you allow them to play, you allow them to enjoy, you allow them to be careful lang muna. And then you just teach them the primary uh, cognitive requirements of reading, writing, and arithmetic. Pero hindi forceful ang approach. No, dapat yung mukha sila nag enjoy Ganun ang approach. There are even uh, child development centers in different parts of the world no, na Ang ginagawa lang ng bata from grade 1 to 3 is to have fun, is to play, to socialize with their uh, classmates, and to uh, to develop moral character, one of which is in Japan, another one is in Finland. No? These structures of education is effective because you allow the learners to have a certain level of socialization. Kasi after all, diba, I think you've already heard about the lines, it takes a village to raise a child. And therefore, no, maganda din na i-allow mo yung mga bata to interact with fellow children no, to realize certain things. May mga matututunan sila with their classmates. So this is child-centered design. No, you allow the learners to you allow the learners to participate and be part, no. Kaya, kaya din na nilagay ko dyan is students are actively involved and custom made. Minsan, gumagawa ang mga elementary and primary teachers ng mga activities na hindi talaga siya kasama sa, sa lesson plan. No? 
Pero yung activity kasi na yun ay pwedeng makatulong sa bata. So they try to create a, a what they call this, uh, an activity no, wherein the learners will be actively participating. Okay? Hindi na ngayon, hindi dati kasi more on quiz, spelling, ganun ka-heavy yung content dati. Pero ngayon, no, the approach for primary years should be developmental approach. Meaning, we do not already expect for them to perfect a spelling quiz. We do not expect them to always answer correctly when we ask them 3 plus 5, 3 plus 3. Okay? But we want that. Gayun pa man, no, an approach that is encouraged today is an approach that is more humanitarian. I would say humanitarian. Hindi, hindi militant approach. No? Hindi natin papagalitan kapag hindi nasagot ng bata yung... 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Hindi natin sila papagalitan agad. No? But we have to point out that they are wrong. Okay? We have to point out that they are wrong. Okay. So that's child-centered design. The next one is the experience-centered design. As I have mentioned also in the discussion on uh, levels of curriculum, the experience gives meaning of the content. Yung experience ng bata, yung karanasan ng bata, yun yung nagbibigay ng halaga doon sa tinuturo mo. Kasi kung hindi naman yan ko magagamit, ma'am, sir, para saan pa po yan? Ganun yung isipin ng bata. Okay. It's simultaneous learning, heavy emphasis on learners' interests and felt needs. Curriculum would be ever-changing in addressing the needs. Okay. I want to highlight the per, uh, first second and third in one state in one statement every student have different needs okay? every student have different needs why because they have different experiences okay anong ibig sabihin noon nakalagay diyan heavy emphasis on learners interests and felt needs ano yung kailangan ng bata based on your diagnosis on the activity or based on your observation and nakalagay dyan, curriculum would be ever-changing. Why? As I have also mentioned in a previous discussion, curriculum is responsive to the society. A good curriculum is responsive to the society. Meaning, it's continually changing because the needs of the learners varies. Nag-iiba-iba. Sa isang classroom, iba yung kailangan, mga pangangailangan ng bata. Sa isang henerasyon, Iba-iba din yung pangangailangan ng bata. Nagva-vary yan. Although may mga fundamental uh, fundamental traits, no? fundamental content na kailangan talaga matutunan ng bata. Pero nagva-vary yung general approach. Kagaya before, ang approach ng mga teachers ay militant approach. No? Strict. May hawak na stick. Ganun. Ngayon hindi na stick ang hawak. Mouse na kasi nag na. No? But kidding aside, uh, but kidding aside, no, um, the teachers, no, has to make sure that the experiences of their learners is observed or can be observed in their approach in teaching. Limbawa, providing realistic, uh, realistic uh, approaches or realistic examples. Pag nagtuturo, uh, wag kang magbibigay ng example na hindi makakakonek yung bata sa so, ay. Ano yun? Hindi ko po yun mag Hindi ko po alam kasi hindi ko po naranasan. Something like that. So, one of the uh, things also that I would like to share is do not assume. No, Do not assume that your students already know. Do not assume that your students are amazing or smart already. No, Do not assume. Kasi pwede may mga students ka na ganun. Pero as a teacher, dapat ang approach mo is level kayang maabot yung mga batang may pangangailangan pa para mag-improve at kaya ding maabot yung mga batang magagaling na. Hindi pwedeng i-cater mo lang yung group of students na may pangangailangan na special. no Kung Tapos papabayaan mo na yung magagaling. Hindi mo na papansinin. Hindi pwede yun. Okay? You have to cater all of the needs of your students as much as possible. And of course, no, your approaches as a teacher has to vary. Hindi mo naman may hit yan 100% talaga eh. But you have to hit at least 80% of the class no, to learn. Okay? 
So that is experiential, uh, sorry, experience-centered curriculum under learner cent uh, experience-centered design under learner-centered curriculum. The last type, no, the last type is the problem-centered curriculum. Problem-centered curriculum are organized to reinforce cultural traditions and also address those community and social needs that are currently unmet. The major concerns in, uh, is with genuine life problems and the needs to adjust or cater to the concerns and situations of learners. So as stated already, no, uh, readable naman natin, na maintindihan naman natin, na ang approach na ito is focusing on allowing learners to participate in real-life problems and see on how they're going to address it. Somehow this is related to learner-centered curriculum under uh, pattern on experience. experience no? But this one naman, uh, may, may konting pagkakaiba. No? Tingnan natin. Life situation design. So life situation design, ang strength nito is problem-solving procedures for learners. Content is organized to view problems, utilizes past and current experiences as meanings, as means of making analysis, linking subject matter to real situation to the to increase relevance of or of meaningful learning. <clears throat> Again, how do we highlight meaningful learning? Paano magkakaroon ng meaningful learning ang bata based on their experiences. Now, life situation design is contextualized on life situations, as mentioned, di ba? Pero, hindi natin nakakalimutan dito yung alin, yung content organization, na meron kang pattern na sinusunod kung paano maaccumulate ng bata yung pagkatuto. May order kang susundin. Example sa problem solving sa mathematics o kaya sa physics, no? Yung ibibigay mo na problem is realistic problems, observable problems. Okay? Observable problems yon nararanasan ng bata. Halimbawa, pag in a physics problem, nasa jeep ka, tapos biglang kumanan yung, yung jeep ni driver, saan papaling yung katawan mo. These are basic concepts no? that is observable. Pero ang approach mo naman for content is yung computation. So what am I trying to say? Sa life situation design, nandoon yung experience at nandun din yung content. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba, nakalagay din dyan, linking subject matter to real life situation. So, yung, um, yung, yung example ko kanina, yung computation na part, yun yung subject matter. Yung real life situation, yung pagsakay mo ng jeep, pag pumalik ng kanan yung, ano, yung, yung sasakyan. No? So, nakalagay din dyan, it utilizes the past and current experiences to make a meaningful analysis. No? Parang example, sa approach na yon, una gagawin mo, babigay ka ng scenario, kumanan yung jeep, saan papaling ang katawan mo? Papaling ang katawan mo sa kaliwa naman, sa sabihin ng bata, kasi yun yung nararanasan nila. And then tsaka mo na ipapasok yung computation yung analysis, yung content ng physics behind the motion of the jeepney and the motion of the one riding the jeep. Something like that. So that is life situation design. Sabihin natin, ibaba natin ng level. Uh, sabihin natin sa lower year. Yung pagbili sa tindahan. Pagbili sa tindahan, this is also a life situation design. On mathematics, pagbibili, meron kang 20 pesos, bibili ka ng tinapay na halagang sa is pagkano ang sukli mo no uh, nagtanong ka sino dito yung mga bumibili sa tindahan sa mga bata if you're teaching grade 4 or grade 3 sino yung mga bumibili sa tindahan mag magkano yung bente may dala kang bente may binili ka na ganyan so that's a life situation design approach naman for kids no and then yun uh, make sure that you you are involved as a teacher make sure that you are involved as a teacher kasi hindi yung magbibigay ng meaningfulness eh if the students see that the teacher is really participative with their learner le learning and concerned with their learning no yung teacher ninyo makakasa yung yung students ninyo makikita naman yun ma-observe naman ninyo limitations nito is ability to determine the uh, the scope and sequence of essential areas of living tends to indoctrinate youth into existing condition. Ayun lang yung limitation nito. 
na indoctrinate mo yung youth into an existing condition. If you, in fact, you, you're a teacher, you're supposed to uh, encourage them to think beyond the box. In fact, there is no box, box di ba? But you are conditioning them, eh. Kinocondition mo sila sa mga magiging responses nila. Okay, yung masanay na lang sila na ganun yung ano, situation. This is on the context of social, ano to ha, social social problems kasi yung sinabi ko kanina kan is more on scientific and ano no but yun yung nagiging limitations nito okay next is core design oh, sorry oh, sorry next is core design so core design is social function uh, aims to create universal sense of inquiry discuss and understand among learners focus is on general education unifies the content present subject matter relevant to the learners and engage active processing of information. So, dito sa problem-centered curriculum, i-highlight ko lang ulit, nandyan pa rin si, nandyan pa rin si content. No? Hindi lang siya naka-base sa experience. So, nandyan yung experiences and then si content, you're going to find, you're going to bridge it together. So, live situation at sa core design, halos parehas lang. Pero kasi sa core design, gusto ng i-highlight ni core design hindi specialization. Anong gusto ng i-highlight ni core design? Ang gusto ng i-highlight ni core design is for learners to have knowledge about general education, about what's happening in the economy, what's happening in the society, um, approaches on literature, what books have you read, what sabi na what games do you play? No, those social knowledge, those information no, is also uh, you know would would allow learners uh, be able to solve problems in in real life having general knowledge no having general information could actually say help students no during uh, when they're growing in order to solve certain problems so again no ang core design naka-focus yan sa sabi natin sa citizenship or as a whole ng isang bata ang isang bata dapat may isa siyang may alam siyang ang isa sa example siguro na pwedeng kong mabigay dito is the three Rs no reading writing and arithmetic reading writing and, and arithmetic is an approach no to make sure that learners knows how to read how to write and how to count numbers which are essential in the function in in living in the society so may social function ka at least marunong ka magbasa, magsulat, at magbilang. It's one of the general education. No? Pero ngayon kasi hindi na lang yun eh. Halimbawa, during these online classes, ano, pang, ano pa dapat ang alam ng bata na uh, during these online classes? At alam din ni teacher, using of cell phone mobile, for mobile classes, using laptops, no? how to present your PowerPoint presentations online. These are general educations, we say also, no? This is also an approach on general education. So, tandaan natin, no, in the problem-centered curriculum, there are two. We have the life situation and the uh, life situation and the uh, core design. The life situation is more on classroom. Classroom, tapos, bibigay ka ng example, tapos, irerate mo sa content. Pagdating naman sa core design, it's holistic approach of the content and experiences of the learners that is that will lead them to become a functioning citizen okay so i'm oh, sorry uh, variations of core design subject matter uh, subject matter core would be classified as subject center design areas of living rooted in progressive education tradition uh, areas of living rooted in progressive education tradition so may dalawang uh, pwedeng pagbasihan ang core design depende ito sa subject nung na tinuturo mo if you're teaching social sciences if you're teaching english and uh, english and languages if you're teaching si uh, mathematics no or sciences and also kung saan nakatira or kung saan uh, kung anong society yung ginagalawan ng bata na kailangan niyang matutunan okay so core design is a holistic approach on learners so again there are these are the types and patterns of the curriculum no the types are subject centered curriculum ito yung mga types uh, the type is subject centered curriculum the patterns are separate subject 
correlated and broad field design. Okay, subject-centered curriculum are more on uh, teacher-centered, heavily content, content-heavy ito kasi nakafocus ito sa nature ng subject. Ang bawat subject po ay pwede kang gumamit ng iba-ibang approach on how you're going to teach it. If you see a subject, if, it, if you see subject uh, separately, you isolate them. If you see subjects that can be correlated, go ahead, no? Uh, hanap ka ng palaan para makorrelate mo. And there are also subjects na broad field by nature, kagaya ng MAPE. Uh, another type is the learner-centered curriculum and the patterns are child and experience. Again, dito naman, ang, ginala, ang gina, nilalagay natin sa gitna ng curriculum is the child development, okay, basing on their experiences. And then the third one is problem-centered curriculum, life situation. Uh, ang kanyang Ang kanyang patterns are life situation, which is experiences and content. Okay? Experience siya, and then content, ibibridge mo. No? Pagdating sa core, it's experience and content, but it is a holistic approach kasi ang, ang gusto niya is magkaroon ka ng functioning citizen. Okay? So again, that what are the three types of curriculum? We have subject-centered curriculum, learner-centered curriculum, and problem-centered curriculum. How many patterns did we discuss? We have separate subject design, correlated subject design, broad field subject design, uh, child uh, curriculum design, experience curriculum design, life situation design, and core design. So those are the types and patterns of curriculum. So we've just talked about the fundamental concepts behind or fundamental concepts in curriculum. We talk about levels of curriculum wherein, again, the learners are the center of the curriculum. And in order for, uh, for curriculum to reach learners no, from societal, institutional, instructional, dapat magkaroon ng experiential level of curriculum wherein the experiences should be appropriate para magkaroon ng meaningful learning. Bakit ko kanina pa inuulit-ulit ang meaningful learning? Meaningful learning talks about uh, halaga, no? yung halaga ng tinuturo mo. Kasi baka hindi pa halagahan ng bata yung tinuturo mo kasi hindi niya makita yung essence nito. And makikita lamang ng bata ang essence ng curriculum kapag ito ay nararanasan niya. We also talk about the types and patterns of curriculum, that the types and patterns of curriculum is essential on how we view the subject, on how we view the learners, and how we view the experiences of the learners. Okay? So, nandun pa rin yung minds on, hands on, at hearts on na tinuturo natin sa curriculum development. Okay? So, again, thank you very much for listening and God bless po sa inyo lahat.